Hello and welcome to another great deck tech here at Chuckwagon MTG. Today you get to experience our first ever commander deck. So this is a EDH. I have been dabbling with this for about a year. Uh, so this is this is about my uh, third deck that I've I've built to completion and played and honed. And if you're if you're ranking this uh, with other decks. You could consider this a good beginner deck with some with some potential for winning, but a high potential of having a lot of fun. Uh, it's got a nice side and it's got a jerk side, but I, we'll walk through that together. So today we are playing Ilharg the Raised Boar. Uh, Ilharg is a 5 CMC uh, legendary creature. Uh, boar God. It's in mono red. So it has trample. It's a 6-6. Six, six. It's got a good body. And whenever it attacks, you can put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking and return that creature to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. Uh, if it dies, you can put it third from the top. Uh, but we're going to abuse that uh, trigger of when it, whenever it attacks. So we're looking for creatures that have a good enter the battlefield trigger or uh, that can do some damage while they're out on the battlefield that you can put it back in your hand keep it safe but the deck doesn't just rely on Ilharg so Ilharg is is a good um, early game motivator so you, you get some damage out there with Ilharg and of course everyone will target your poor little piggy but um, later on you're, you'll transition into a, into a part of the game where you can just play your big monster creatures um, from your hand without having to use Ilharg. So it's, it's a great transition into the later game. But let's walk through the deck. Uh, we'll start off here with our, our mana rocks, uh, starting with Lotus Bloom. We have Mox Tantalite. Uh, both of these have Suspend. Uh, mana Crypt, kind of the uh, a standard <laughs> in most EDH decks. Soul Ring, of course. Uh, Gilded Lotus. Hedron Archive. Dark Steel Ingot. Felwar Stone. Corrupted Graph Stone. And Fire Mind Vessel. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of artifact backup to this that'll that'll keep you casting these creatures one right after the other. Um, so to protect Ilharg or whatever creature you put out there, I've got I have several uh, equipment uh, choices that you can use to either attach to Ilharg or attach to one of your other creatures. Uh, but just to keep them safe, uh, dark steel plate to give them indestructible, uh, lightning greaves to give it shroud and haste. Uh, sword of sinew and steel uh, gives it plus two plus two protection from black and red and whenever uh, the equipped creature deals damage you destroy up to one target planeswalker and up to one artifact great value sword of light and shadow there, there's several swords you can stick in here I chose these uh, mostly for for the protection uh, but it, it, this also gives your your creature plus two plus two protection from white and black and whenever the equip creature deals damage to a player you gain three life and you can return one target creature from your graveyard to your hand um, so you know expect to get your you know your enter the battlefield creatures destroyed occasionally you will you can equip uh, your sword of light and shadow and uh, get that creature back play him again a uh, hammer of nazan uh, so it's a legendary artifact and whenever Hammer of Nazan or another equipment enters the battlefield, you can attach that equipment to target creature you control. Uh, so this is a, uh, since we have so many uh, equipment, you can use this to facilitate getting those equipments attached to your creatures. And of course, Helm of the Host. We're dealing with legendary creatures and a lot of creatures that are big. Duplicating those can only, uh, you know, r r increase the probability that you will win. Um, next up, let's look at our card draw, Cathartic Reunion, uh, discard two, draw three, Browbeat, uh, 
Any player can have Browbeat deal 5 damage to them. Of course, you'll choose the creature that has uh, the most damage dealt to them. They probably want to preserve their life total. You can draw 3 cards. Risk Factor. Um, you can target, of course, again, target the player who has the lowest life total. And then you can jumpstart it and cast it again. So you kind of get value both ways, either with the 4 damage or with the card draw. Flame of Keld. Uh, so once you've emptied your hand, uh, you you can cast Flame of Keld. You can draw two cards, and then your red sources um, on whenever you get to the part three of the saga, um, it deals extra damage to your opponents. Uh, and bag of holding. So if you hate the wheel like I do, um, I yeah I I would say I. I despise the wheel because <laughs> you know when they make you uh, discard your hand and then draw cards uh, well this will keep all of those cards safe that you can return all those cards back to your hand or it, it, here if you pay two and tap you can draw a card discard a card and that discarded card goes into exile and you can sacrifice bag of holding and return that back to your hand so uh, fantastic card if you hate the wheel like I hate the wheel. So let's look at removal. Anger of the Gods. Basic removal. Three damage to each creature. Uh, if it, if the, if the creature would die this turn, exile it. So I'm using, I'm using some targeted removal. Uh, meaning at different power levels. Uh, y because you're going to have bigger creatures out there. Anger of the Gods is good to wipe out, like, People going wide, lots of tokens. Um, our devastation is the same. Uh, your creatures are higher power, so it deals five damage to them, and also uh, to non-bolus planeswalkers. Uh, it removes indestructible, which is is great. So you can hit, you can you can stack them up. You hit them with an anger of the gods, and then hour of devastation to double that up. If that five da that five damage removes the indestructible and destroys them, so. Uh, also, Star of Extinction, 20 damage to each creature and each Planeswalker. If you just need to, to clear out, <laughs> clear the board, which you will need to. This deck doesn't move super fast. Uh, Rock Slide Ambush uh, deals damage to target creature equal to the number of mountains you control. You're playing 36 lands. Only three of those are, are not basic uh, mountains. So you're taking advantage of that with all your mountains. And you can do a targeted removal. Vandal Blast. So for uh, this is uh, for artifact removal. You can overload it by paying four in red and destroy um, all artifacts. Uh, pithing Needle. Everybody loves a good Pithing Needle. Uh, your opponent's playing a Planeswalker or something with an activated ability, uh, and you want to shut it off. Play your Pithing Needle. Oblivion Stone, uh, you can put fake counters on each of your permanents and then destroy each non-land permanent without a fake counter on it. It's a good board wipe, good targeted board wipe. Um, Witch Pain Orb, um, so it, on, on this, may, this is a personal choice because I've been cursed before, but uh, it gives you, gives you hexproof and it uh, removes all curses attached to you. And then this... One of the jerkiest cards in the entire deck is Ruination. Destroy all non-basic lands. Like I said, you're playing almost all basic mountains. So destroying non-basic lands. Super jerk move, but power play. Power play. Especially on turn four. Uh, so, speaking of jerk cards, <laughs> uh, Mana Web is to slow down your opponent. So for three, there's an artifact. Whenever a land an opponent controls is tap for mana, tap all lands that player controls that could produce any type of mana that land could produce. So whenever your opponent taps a land, uh, they have to tap all their lands. Uh, a super jerk card. I got some good power swings with this in a couple games. Uh, a Chroma's Memorial for seven. Creatures you control have Flying, First Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Haste, and Protection from Black and Red. Getting this on the battlefield. Uh, enables those creatures that you throw out there to immediately attack, uh, but they have vigilance, 
trample, haste, first strike, flying, and protection. So. Uh, fervor. So, you know, playing Il Ilharg is great, but playing Ilharg and immediately attacking, even better. So if you want to give all your creatures haste, fervor. Chaos Wand, just, I, you know, I, I know that playing a mono-colored deck is, is an automatic deficiency. Uh, it automatically puts you behind the curve because you don't have as many choices. Uh, now, we've tried to, to, you know, grab as many choices as we could, but sometimes you need to reach into your opponent's deck and play something from their side. So, with Chaos Wand, um, you pay for, tap it, and then target opponent will exile cards from the top of their library until they exile an instant or sorcery card, and you can cast that card without paying its mana cost. Uh, then I'll put it, put all the exile cards that weren't cast at the bottom of their la library in random order. So this this has two effects that I found. You can bleed out your instants and sorceries from your opponents. If uh, if you see you have an opponent that uh, is playing uh, some some pretty decent um, instants and sorceries, you can steal them all one at a time. Uh, Mirage Mirror. So. Uh, Duplicating effects um, of creatures, enchantments, uh, or land, or artifacts. So you can double up effects. You can uh, steal something from your opponent and use it on the battlefield. Uh, this is like the, uh, the do-everything tool. Mirror March. So Mirror March, you know, this is a coin flipper. So... Uh, you're not playing all legendary creatures, so uh, I'll show you in a minute what the creatures we're playing. But towards the end of the game, there's a lot of variability. People are top decking. You know, you're not doing any sort of crazy uh, turn three combo. Uh, so as you get towards the latter part of the game, putting Mirror March out there uh, could enable a sneaky win. And I've actually gotten. Uh, a pretty sneaky win with this, uh, with one of the creatures that I'll point him out. And, of course, Inspiring Statuary. We're playing so many artifacts that it would be a shame not to use them uh, to cast all your non-artifact spells. So this gives, the, gives all your non-artifact spells improvised, which means you can tap a, um, an artifact to help pay for their mana cost. Now let's scoot over and look at some of the creatures we're playing. So a lot of these have, uh, yeah, it's like a big pile of jerky cards. <laughs> uh, so a lot of these uh, are early, you know earlier game, uh, earlier game plays to get stuff out on the board and to, to help keep the battlefield clean or to ramp or to, or utility creatures. But the majority of these have enter the battlefield triggers that are going to help you uh, keep the board clear. And help you um, uh, isolate your opponents uh, away from what you're trying to do. So, Dire Fleet Daredevil, uh, fantastic card for two. Uh, first strike, very cheap. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, exile target instant or sorcery card from an opponent's graveyard. You can cast that card this turn and spend any mana as though it were any type. So, uh, you know, your opponents are going to be playing board wipes, they're going to be playing. Spells that, you know, maybe a ramp spell that you need lands, you're running behind, and you want to you wanna steal the ramp spell. Yeah, great utility creature. Captain Lannery Storm. Uh, whenever it attacks, uh, create a treasure token, which can help you ramp. And then you sack that treasure token, and uh, you, Lan Captain Lannery Storm gets plus one, plus zero to the end of turn. Hammer of Perforos, also giving all your creatures haste. And in a pinch, you can sack a land and create a 3-3 colorless golem enchantment artifact creature token. That's a mouthful. Uh, Goblin Chain Whirler. Um, so I've, uh, I've, I've played Ilharg with Goblin Chain Whirler before. I've played Goblin Chain Whirler by himself. A limited creature, but in, in the early game, you can use him as a blocker. A 3-3 first striker. Uh, is a is a pretty decent turn three. Uh, Perforos, God of the Forge. 
uh, legendary enchantment god. Um, there's decks built around Perforos. Uh, so the, the big thing about Perforos is that whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals two damage to each opponent, to each opponent, and you're going to be dropping creatures constantly. You're dropping these enter the battlefield triggers, or these enter the battlefield creatures with your Ilharg, so you're going to get a lot of value out of Perforos. Uh, also, Perforos can bump can pump your creatures uh, for two and a red. All your creatures can get plus one plus zero, zero to end of turn. Once your um, devotion to red increases uh, to five, this turns into an indestructible creature, uh, which is formidable all on its own. Uh, Fanatic of Mogus uh, for three and a red, Minotaur Shaman. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it deals damage to each opponent equal to your devotion to red. To each opponent. Great value. And putting him with Ilharg is, is, is just fantastic. You just keep dropping him out there, and your devotion to red at that moment is a minimum of three with Ilharg in this. But you're going to have other things out that will help, help fan that. Uh, Burning Sun's Avatar, a 6-6 six, six dinosaur. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to target opponent or Planeswalker, and three damage to up to one other target creature. So, uh, again, targeted removal. Hellkite Tyrant, which might be my favorite my favorite creature out of all the... Well, my second favorite. So, it's a dragon for six. You want to drop this with Ilharg. Uh, flying Trample, when it deals damage to a player, gain control of all artifacts that player controls. You can steal all their mana rocks. Uh, if they are playing artifacts, you get quite a bit. And at the beginning of, of your upkeep, if you control 20 or more artifacts, you win the game. You already have a ton of artifacts. You can steal your opponent's artifacts, play um, Hellkite Tyrant, and sit back and wait for your win to come back around to you. Um, Crater Hellion. Uh, when Crater Hellion enters the battlefield, it deals 4 damage to each other creature. So again... That I'm looking for that level of removal that doesn't affect the creatures that I'm playing, but affects all other creatures. Uh, Firemall Kavu. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it deals 2 damage to target creature, and when it leaves the battlefield, it deals 4 damage to target creature. Targeted removal. Demanding Dragon. It enters the battlefield. Uh, uh, it, can, it deals... 5 damage to target opponent unless they sacrifice a creature. And Zealous Conscripts, uh, when it enters the battlefield, gain control of target permanent until end of turn, untap that permanent, it gains haste. So what I like to do with Zealous Conscripts is if I, my opponent has a single blocker, uh, swing in with Ilharg, drop Zealous Conscripts, steal that single blocker, and let my, let my attack go through. Fire Dragon, Fire Dragon, enters the battlefield, deals damage to target creature equal to the number of mountains you control, and you're controlling a lot of mountains. Void Winner, uh, your opponents can't cast spells with even converted mana costs. Your opponents can't block with creatures with even conver converted mana costs. So a little, a little janky, but an 11-9 body, it's uh, that has your opponent has to have a specific response to that. Mirror Battle Spear. Um, so, Mirror Battle Spear. I I really like Mirror Battle Spear in this deck because when you drop them on the battlefield, you create four one one colorless mirror artifact creature tokens. It's a four seven body, so it's good by itself. And whenever it attacks, you can tap X untap mirror uh, you control. And if you do, uh, Mirror Battle Spear gets plus X plus zero until end of turn and deals X damage to the player or Planeswalker it's attacking. So you drop Mirror Battle Sphere a few times with Ilharg, and then you play it from your hand, and now you have several Mirror Artifact creature tokens that you can use to power Mirror Battle Sphere in to, for the win. Uh, it also creates 4-4 four, four blocker, you know, 4-1-1 one, one colorless Mirror Artifact creature token blockers that stick around. Uh, Meteor Golem. Um, so this this one, I would say, is number one. If you get Meteor Golem out, you can just target non-land permanents and opponent controls. 
and keep, you know, the ones that are giving you the most problem, drop out on the battlefield. Um, it destroys that non-land permanent, and it comes back into your hand, and you do it again. Tyrant of Discord, enter the battlefield trigger. Target opponent chooses a permanent they control at random and sacrifices it. If a non-land permanent is sacrificed this way, repeat the process. So, <clears throat> if it misses a land, it'll repeat the process. <laughs> Plus, it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Silverclad, Ferocidon, and Rage. Uh, whenever it's dealt damage, each opponent sacrifices a permanent. So, if someone chump blocks this uh, with, a, with a smaller creature, each opponent has to sack a permanent. Flesh Pulper Giant, enter the battlefield. You can destroy target creature with toughness 2 or less. Targeted removal, not super great, but a good 4-4 body. Also, you can play this earlier in the game and uh, maybe remove something that's been giving you problems. Chaos Maw, when Chaos Maw enters the battlefield, it deals 3 damage to each other creature. Again, looking for that level that doesn't affect my creatures, affects all your opponent's creatures can be used in conjunction with um, uh, maybe an Hour of Devastation or an Anger of the Gods. Uh, if a... So, Angrass Marauders. Uh, if a source would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead. So, the effect of this is normally you play uh, Angrass Marauders and the source if a source would deal damage to a permanent or player, including you, it deals double that damage. But at the end, at the beginning of your end step, this returns back to your hand, so it doesn't affect you. It just affects you affects your opponent during that attack step. Ulamog, the ceaseless hunger, um, indestructible ten ten. Uh, you do not get the cast trigger, uh, and you don't get the attack trigger either. But Later on in the game, when Ilharg has been killed several times, and Ulamog is sitting in your hand, this is a fantastic creature to have just to get you to that, you know, get you to that win. Same thing for Blightsteel Colossus, which, eh, pretty close to the jerkiest card you can play in this deck. Swing in with, with Ilharg, drop Blightsteel Colossus, and win, <laughs> destroy it, you know, one-shot your opponent, with 11-11 Infect. Yeah. Not not the greatest. And one of the games I played, um, actually, I cast this after I had Mirror March on the battlefield. It made several copies of it, and I swung at all my opponents in one. Felt really bad. There were some bad feelings on all sides for that, but uh, this is EDH, right? You gotta try to win. Emrakul the Promised End, again, uh, you don't get the cast trigger. Uh, you don't get to take, but it has flying trample and protection from instance. So in that moment of attack, the only thing people can really play is instance, and it's a 13-13 creature with flying trample. You know that's probably the kindest way to play Emrakul, is with Ilharg, because you're not you're not getting the cast triggers uh, until later on. So. Pathraiser of Ulamog uh, for 11. Has Annihilator 3. Again, with with Ilharg, you're not going to get the Annihilator trigger because you have to attack with Pathraiser to get that. But it can't be blocked by more by three or more creatures. Or except by three or more creatures. So um, your opponent has, you know, wants to let the attack go through uh, or wants to try to chump block. Uh, they have to have um, at least three creatures blocking this. It's like Super Menace. And then Metalwork Colossus, you are playing a ton of uh, non-creature artifacts. So this it'll reduce the cost of this just to cast it straight from your hand or just to drop a 10-10 from your hand onto the battlefield. And that is Ilharg, the Raised Boar, our first EDH deck. I want to know what you think. So if you like what you saw, please... Click the like button, hit the subscribe, share this with your friends, your family, your loved ones, because everyone can use a little more magic in their lives.